On today's episode of PJ and the Beard, we're going to talk about a guitar. But before we get into that, I'd like to ask you to consider subscribing to the channel, clicking the notification bell. Your interaction with us helps us interact with great people in the industry. And in this case, uh, Zounds again. Mm -hmm. uh, last time we did something like this, we went through the E's to get to the Epiphones. This time we went into the library, went down the G aisle, and we went right to the Gibsons, and we got in the 1959 Greeny Les Paul Standard. Yeah, so um, you might have seen in some earlier episodes where we've gotten in a guitar, like gotten the Swap Bash Special, and we had a swap, so we were like, let's compare them, mm -hmm. and we like that. So we got in the Epiphone Greeny, and after we had it, we were like, hey. <laughs> right. Uh, might be cool to compare this to the, to the Gibson one. So Zounds was kind enough to send it over, and here it is. Uh, we don't get into the geeky stuff when we do these. We tend to leave this for other people that are better at it. But what we do do, I said it, uh, is, is kind of go through what we like about the guitar, uh, first impressions of the guitar, and then play a whole bunch of clips, a whole bunch of different pedals, uh, maybe a couple jams and stuff like that. So to start off, I'm going to tell you the first thing that popped out at me on this guitar when I picked it out, besides how heavy it is, which is actually, I think we figured out, a couple ounces lighter than the, the Epiphone. Right. It was this particular one. So they're both heavy. Right. They're both like nine something. Mm -hmm. Right. So they're, they're both substantial. Um, for me, it's just the finish. Yeah. Uh, I love the finish on the back of the neck. I think the, the neck profile, they should be the same, but. They're pretty similar. Oh, this feels a little beefier if I'm not. It does feel Especially beefier. Especially here. But I wonder if that's because of the, the finish on the back of the neck, which is almost like a, it's not a real high mm -hmm. glossy finish. Almost like a, I don't want to say sand, but right. none of it is. None of it's a real high gloss. The top, um, again, almost feels more like a satin. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to say it because you probably all think I'm nuts. I don't feel like, I feel like there's a flattening to the, to the horn right here on this particular one. And now I look back. Yeah, the only other time I've seen that is now it's much more dramatic on that, the classic that's on the wall behind us. But the only other time I've seen that. But I feel like it's there. Anyway, those are the things I really like. What do you like, Pat? Well, I'll start where you ended. The finish is, is really cool. I, when we took it out of the box and opened the case, which we'll get to the case later, uh, it's really uh, cool. Look, and it takes a second to kind of take it in. Um, I went playable, a very, very playable, felt comfortable. Uh, I probably like the neck pickup is the biggest and the fullest, right? Because if you know about these guitars, the middle position is the neck, which is wired backwards and, and the bridge makes it out of phase, right? So that's a definite volume drop. There's some bite in the in the bridge, but I really, I really liked the neck, the fullness of the neck. There was a dramatic uh, difference between the the two or three pickup uh, selections. Um, it was easy to play. Uh, playability wise, fit and finish, fantastic. I guess what he's trying to say is what he liked about this guitar <laughs> is the word Gibson. <laughs> right. Uh, let's, not, let's not be liars here. <laughs> like, there is something about that. Have nothing against Epiphone. Epiphone's making some killer stuff. Pat did mention the case. It's worth brown, pulling out. Yeah. You get a nice brown Gibson Les Ball case. Uh, I don't know if we can do this safely, but if we open it up, it is very something inside. It's a little more uh, reddish. The uh, Epiphone one was uh, definitely pretty in pink. Right. You get a strap and you get some tools. You got a whole multi-tool. Yeah, there's a cool multi-tool in there. And um, Zounds, it'll be in there when we send it back. Trust promise. me. Promise. <laughs> now, if it's not, we'll think we did it on purpose. <laughs> yeah, right, right. It fell out when we were shooting the video. The dog ate it. Um, <laughs> yeah, so what we like, let's jump into some sounds. Pat, you started with just doing... Straight into the Tyler, what did you? Yeah, so this is kind of nice, right? Some other guitars we've done lately have push pulls, and this is three pickups. So we it's three right, positions, right? Right. Two, sorry, two two pickups, three positions, no push pulls, and all of that. So just went through the Tyler. Uh, the Echo Tour was on probably on everything we did tonight uh, through the Tyler, and I just went uh, from back to front, front to back. I think I went back to front, meaning bridge, and I did some arpeggio picking, and then I uh, raked down through.
you're watching this video, you might notice if you watched the Epiphone Greeny video we did, we tried to do all the same clips, yeah. all the same pedals, all the same clips, so we can kind of pull them together in another video down the road. Or you can just go watch the Epiphone video. And in that video, after we did the clean, we threw a little bit of drive on with the special cranker from Earthquaker Devices uh, just to add some drive to see what it'll sound like. Here's all three pickups with that. So not to be left out of the drive game, uh, I do like tube screamers, so I went on the back wall and I grabbed our TL Pedals Honker Overdrive from our friend Tim Lewis in Canada. And I tried to play some kind of riffy chords and some big chords and uh, to see how it reacted. And here's what I did. that we've done is the that leslie sound series if we get more leslie pedals we'll add to it but we've done there's not much more room left uh and so one of them was the micro vent from neo instruments and i pulled that out and played a little bit and it sounds like this <laughs> And so I wanted to move on to uh, one of the series that we're doing, and we have a Univibe series with several pedals, and uh, we got this one from RFO Electronics. It's the Waterfall, and I played it uh, on all the pickups, I do believe, and I did this. <laughs> I'm going to do a clip with the B Custom uh, from Barber Electronics, a version one direct drive in a small box. 
Uh, but that sounded really good, so I used it on our first jam. So the first jam we have here tonight is the Beat Custom into the Echo Tour. Tyler with me playing, oh my gosh, <laughs> workout, me playing the Gibson Greeny. Pat, what did you play? Well, I got the cousin, the little brother, whatever you want to call it, the Epiphone that we mentioned earlier. I think it's the first time you're seeing it on this particular episode. And I played it um, through a very skinny down travel board. I believe all that was left on there was an Echo Tour, an Echo Tour and a tuner because we didn't need the reverb anymore because unfortunately we sent back the Tremonti uh, MT-15 mm -hmm. and now we are playing through a Classic 30 combo back here. And so I use the Echo Tour, the Greeny and the PV Classic 30. Let's hold those up side by side one time. Real close. Yeah. Try not to relic them. Big difference in the fish. Big difference yeah. in the finish. Yeah. So here's the gem. series from our Shakedown Sound series on envelope filters, I pulled off the Spectrum Intelligent Filter. Uh, what a joy it was to pull this off the wall again and play a little bit. I always love this pedal. Here you go. <laughs> All right, so sticking with the series, uh, the tremolo shirt was a bit of a happy accident tonight. I wore that over here. Uh, but I went back to the tremolo section of the wall there. I got the Hampstead Soundworks Signature Analog Tremolo. And we always have to quote Tim that we interviewed from there. This sounds glorious. And this is what it sounded like with the greenie. <laughs> Thank you. 
brings us back to the direct drive version one from Barber Electronics. Um, yeah, it's a go-to for me. Here's what it sounds like. <laughs> Before we end this video, uh, we're going to go to final thoughts in a second, but we always uh, do a jam at the end. And so again, I'm playing the star of the show because that's what we're doing. And uh, we just got, when we got this guitar in, we got in the Keeley Blues Disorder. I took it right out of the box, looked at a couple of the recommended settings, tweaked it a little bit and just went for it. Uh, played this. There'll be video coming about this at some point. What so did you do? Yeah, to back you up. Now that the, the, the Tremonti's set back, we've gotten back out of PV Classic 30 that we used to use back in the very beginning of the channel. Mm -hmm. But between then and now, it's gone to the shop and been kind of totally overhauled because it, well, it really needed it. And it's really punchy tonight. So I plugged into that. Uh, it had a little bit of reverb on it, but the pedal was still sitting over there earlier, the G-Lab. So I turned off the delay. You know, we don't do that very often and turned on the G-Lab to get a nice kind of big reverb sound going. And then with, I uh, played with the PRS DGT with, you know, the swapped out pickups. So these are Porter pickups and I was on the neck pickup with it split. I thought it was really nice, really nice. And the neck's called smooth for a reason. Yeah, so you're gonna Sorry. have to, yeah, you're gonna have to go to the end of the video to catch that. Uh, feel free to jump over whatever we have to say if you'd like. So right. final thoughts. Right. Uh, final thoughts. Again, I have to go back to how it looks. Um, I'm stuttering here a little bit because I, I mentioned uh, when we did the Epiphone, I do have a Duesenberg that goes out of phase in the two pickups. And I've always kind of struggled to find a home for that. I think it's a unique sound. Uh, so it's in here. Uh, I liked it on some of the drive. I liked it on some of the clean. I didn't like it on some of the other stuff. So I think for this signature guitar, we're trying to figure out how we would use it. So we approached it how we would use it. We didn't try to play any song or necessarily any overt style from any of the famous players that made Green, the, the real one of this. Um, but it was really cool of Zounds to send it. And just so you know, it's probably pretty obvious. This is the middle one, right? There's the, the Epiphone for like 1500. This is like 32. And then the, uh, I think it's uh, Collector's Choice is like, 20 grand. Uh, we didn't ask for that one. Yeah, we didn't ask for <laughs> Don't one. expect a video for that to, yeah. to forthcome. But it's a beautiful guitar. We appreciate um, Zounds sending it over. It'll, it'll be here for a little while. Uh, we'll probably shoot a couple other videos with it. And we may even have our one Les Paul fanatic friend come over and take it for a spin. But. Yeah. Um, my final thoughts are pretty simple. Uh, we are, we are going to do a back-to-back -back video. We're going to take all the clips, put them back-to-back, -back, play some new clean sounds on it, and a couple more jams maybe. Uh, look for that to be coming. My final thoughts will probably be more in there. Listen, I'm not sure. I, I like the, uh, after one night, I, I really do like the finish. I think it's a beautiful guitar. I'm not sure about that middle pickup, that, that, that setting, yeah. that setting, that um, out of phase thing. Um, the neck pickup on that guitar is the money for me. It mm -hmm. sounds, it sounds really, really good. Uh, I, the bridge pickup on both of them, once you get the drive on it, by like the direct drive stuff, mm -hmm. then they start to sing. Without the drive on it, it's almost like they're too, it's almost a little too bright or whatever. Right, but right. Um, again, I, mean, I think it has a place. I think it has a thing going on. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, that's why you have multiple guitars. You go, what am I playing now? And which one is going to do that thing? Right. This one definitely has that thing in there. So, right. um, yeah. Thanks for watching. Thanks. If you hit the subscribe button, leave a comment. 
notification bell, any of that stuff. Anytime you interact with the show, that's what helps us make connections with cool people like Zounds, who sends us a lot of really cool stuff for you to check out. Um, and we appreciate that. So with that. I'm PJ on behalf of The Beard, reminding no matter what you hear, you never have too much gear.